Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with some quick Righteous Fire Inquisitor progression. I'm primarily doing this because I'm getting spammed on my stream about like, is RF leveling dead? Is it dead? Question mark. So I figured a lot of people just were not fully understanding the changes of the nerfs. They're pretty much targeted more towards the mapping progression, aimed more to more so towards like red maps and early yellow map progression. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just kind of show you guys a little bit of how the leveling kind of is. So, so far, everything is quite literally exactly the same. In fact, I would even say that you have a pretty big damage boost in the campaign if you were to have a bit more life on your gear. So we are currently level 60 on our character. We've played for about four hours, pretty much just going through exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little boss here in a minute. Uh, on our ascendancy, you can see our tree is pretty much identical here. I think I changed the auras a tiny bit. It doesn't really matter. Um, totally not face tanking mobs, by the way. So we are currently running Oath of the Maj. Now, this is entirely up to the player on what you want to do here. I chose to run Oath of the Maj just for speed, so I don't have anything in my boots and I get the extra 30% movement speed. Now, on top of this with the Inquisitor Ascendancy, remember that Pious Path is what gives you the really big steroid for sustain. This is what makes Inquisitor a powerhouse in the campaign. So over here on our defenses, you can see we have just shy now of what is that 1500 combined regen between our life and our energy shield now of course that's not 100 percent correct because we don't have full energy shield regen because rf is kind of burning on it but you know just showing you that inquisitor is still very strong for rf in the campaign and the same thing would go for juggernaut as well inquisitor will definitely feel a little bit better just because it's easier to scale you know both stats life plus es but still very both of them very strong in the campaign progression um so everything is literally the exact same so if you wanted to see the links, we're currently running Righteous Fire, Ink AoE, Ellie Focus, and Burning Damage. If you wanted to drop Ellie Focus for efficacy, you absolutely could. My tooltip is currently 18.3 thousand. Um, my weapon is pretty barebone. It just has a um, fire damage to spells roll, which now that I think about it is useless. I need to actually go ahead and replace my weapon. It's kind of poopy. Uh, over here, we're running Purity of Elements, Life Tap, and Flammability. Here's a little peek at the League mechanic as well. You kind of want to aim towards getting these little colorful little balls here. That fills up your uh, your little Wisp count. Uh, and this is where you also encounter the NPCs so that you can actually uh, go ahead and like get the new Ascendancies, right? I will say the League mechanic is like pretty tough. Thankfully, this build does sort of steamroll during the campaign. So it's a really easy time to gear up uh, if you decide to do this. You could, there's kind of poop and rares like candy over here. It does seem like there is a very heavy, there's like very heavy chaos damage in here, which is kind of spooky to be completely honest. Most people have literally no chaos res in the campaign, so. Let's see, where are we going? Okay, good enough. Let's just leave. All right, let me go ahead and show you guys the uh, boss I was talking about. Now, a lot of people keep asking about uh, Hierophant Mana RF, which is, you know, to be expected. We just got teased the gem. I still think that Hierophant is a fantastic option. Like, I really want to play Hierophant Mana Righteous Fire. But the thing is about Hierophant Righteous Fire, Hierophant doesn't really get any sustain on the tree. So if you're going to try to start Hierophant, it's going to be a bit sketchy. It'll work, but I want to say it's just going to be a worse version of a Juggernaut or a uh, Inquisitor until you actually go mana stacking, which typically is gated behind certain items and just a couple of other things, right? So I, I think that the mana archetype is a fantastic, like, in-between version, right? Versus, um, you have, like, the life version, right? Which we're, we're playing right now. And when the life version hits, like, kind of like in your 90s or so, this is when you'll notice the biggest difference on the nerfs. I think at that point, you could potentially transition to the mana version. But I do think it's going to be expensive even for a medium tier setup. Uh, but that's one of the advantages right now of Inquisitor over Juggernaut. If you wanted to dip into the Mana Archetype, you have the ability to play Inquisitor and respect to Hierophant, right? That guy was actually even empowered. That, uh, that should have been kind of spooky, you know? Where are we? Soul of Steel. So close. Alright, we're just gonna go up 
I'll go ahead and pretty much kill this boss over here and then we'll pretty much be good just to show you guys again the survivability totally fine during the campaign i mean those of you guys who have played my righteous fire builds you'll know they're very very strong in the campaign but it's more so just again for assurance reassurance for people I know a lot of the newer players don't really want to go super far into Path of Exile. A lot of you guys just like kind of doing the campaign, doing a couple of maps and saying, you know, all right, I'm pretty much done. That's it. Still fantastic for that reason. It's mainly for when you're pushing a little bit further, when RF's nerfs start to kind of really creep up. Also, just because I know uh, I asked the same question, so I assume other people are going to, you cannot actually have both of the Righteous Fires on at the same time. I have uh, one of the other RFs in here on a weapon swap. I actually saw I was able to run it or level it right there. It's the uh, other Righteous Fire gem. Uh, it actually toggles between the two, so if you try to activate the mono one, it will override the current one, and then you can like swap between them, but I don't know why you would ever like want to toggle them. I have no idea. Maybe there's like some secret that's going to come out from that, but... Yeah, they cannot be run at the same time. Would be really OP to be fair because, you know, the regular RF would technically be giving the other RF a multi, which would be super strong. Augers of Steel. Nice. Okay. So here will be an example of uh, the boss encounter. Let me just go ahead and sit right here. This guy might be able to kill me with this attack. Okay. Then he also has a triple shot. Where's the, where's the triple shot? Show me the triple shot. Okay, yeah, we're, we're fine. It, 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 it's fine. Inquisitor still remains to be an absolute giga chat during the campaign. I mean, you pretty much would have to really go out of your way to get your character killed right now, so... And still absolutely highly recommend it. If you guys like the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day but Sundays. However, I will stream this Sunday for the PoE release um, at twitch.tv slash box. See you guys all in Rayclast.